Lamar Tidwell, our mayor, has been mayor since November of 2014, uh, 13, excuse me. Uh, and he's just finishing up his, his first term. Uh, he's going to give highlights of some of the things that's transpired over the last 18 months or so, uh, and to bring everybody up to speed on where he envisions the city going and some of the, the accomplishments. With that, Mayor Lamar Tidwell. Thank you, Wayne. Uh, good evening. First of all, I'd like to thank the Lord because without him, I would not be standing here in front of this, uh, this audience. Next, I'd like to thank my wife, Jackie, my family for believing in me for all these years, my son and daughter and my sister who are here. I'd like to thank the citizens of Ecorse who elected me as mayor, because without you, I wouldn't be here. Uh, also, I really truly like to thank the city employees, because the city employees, you guys, and one for you guys, we wouldn't have the services that we have in the city of Ecorse. You guys have worked hard tremendously over the last year and a half since I've been in office, and I know you guys continue to do it every day. You work very hard, and I know you guys haven't had a pay raise, but if there's anything I can do without the state control, we're going to try some kind of way to get you guys a pay raise. <laughs> also, I'd like to thank the Ecos Board of Education for allowing us to use this great venue. Is there any uh, board members from the Ecos uh, Public Schools? Would you please stand up? Ms. Aileen Nixon. Ms. April Ackman, Elias uh, Miller, <laughs> Shonda Miller, Keila Freeman McFall. Thank you. And also, I'd like to thank the superintendent of Ecorse Public Schools, Mr. Thomas Park. He's not here. And I'd like to thank his supporting staff for setting this up for us uh, to make sure that we can use this venue. Uh, as Wayne said, after this, after I get the State of the City address, we're going to have the uh, uh, planning uh, board that's going to uh, come up and talk about the master plan that we need to take uh, a, a look at because we haven't had one in over 11 years, and that's the way that we need to move forward as far as getting grants. You've got to have a master plan for recreation and for city planning. Let me introduce my, uh, my colleagues. John Miller, Councilman John Miller, Robert Heller, Brenda Banks, Nathaniel Elam, Gary Simmons, Donald Agee, who's not here, I think he had to work, Doris Young, who is our treasurer, Mr. Robert Heller, he's not here, senior, who's our assessor, and Daniel Hughes, our city clerk. With these guys, we have been working hard to try to turn the course around. I mean, we have some disagreements and we have some agreements, but that's what it's all about. You disagree on certain things and you try to move the city forward, and that's what we're trying to do is move the city forward. The city of course has been faced with many challenges over the last 30 years. We have been placed in receivership twice in 30 years. The old Ecos way has to stop. We have to create a new e-course way. Because as you can see, if we've been in receivership for 30 years, something's wrong. So we got to change the image of e-course, and we got to move forward. We got to quit allowing special interest groups in the city to take away from the citizens of e-course. Because at the end of the day, the, tax, the taxpayers are the stakeholders in the city of e-course. Because without them, we wouldn't have no jobs. We wouldn't have nothing. So we need to start moving e-course in the right direction, move forward. That's what we need to do. The old way is not work. We need to create a new way. 
First of all, let me talk about the issue we had with the senior bus, because I know a lot of people was complaining about the senior bus. And the reason why I'm going to talk to you about the senior bus, for over probably approximately 10 years, we were running our senior buses through SMART. When we was running our senior buses through SMART, we didn't have insurance on those buses. That was a big liability to the city. That was a big liability to the people who were in the buses, and a big liability to if we hit someone. So what we did was we made a decision that we had to stop the buses because of liability. Because like I said before, the taxpayers are the, are the stakeholders, and we got to protect the taxpayers. Because we can't afford another lawsuit in the city of Ecorse. I know there's some upset seniors and some upset people in the community, but we had to do that to protect the stakeholders. The bus, smart buses, we do have insurance on it. We're covered, and they're functioning now. The other issue was people were talking about the food pantry. The food pantry was relocated across the street. And the reason why it was relocated across the street from the Pennsylvania Club was because the roof was leaking. And you can't have a roof leaking where you're giving out food that's not good, it's not safe. So we had to move it across the street to do it. And we had some issues with the food pantry because of the fact that it was closed. But once we moved it, we had to get uh, the, the project, we had to get it uh, inspected again through uh, Forgotten Harvest in order to uh, let us have the open up the food pantry again. Now I'm going to highlight some things that happened since uh, over the fact, last 15 months that's been going on in the city of Ecorse. As you're aware, in August we had a major flood in the city of Ecorse with uh, flooding basements in the whole nine yards. The Ecorse staff, the employees, worked hard and diligently. The council people, they got received phone calls. Everybody worked together to try to help with this issue of this water. We moved forward. We had extra trucks out there to pick up the garbage, so we wouldn't have that issue with smelly garbage in the city of Ecorse. We did whatever we was able to do as far as turning that around, because we didn't want the citizens to suffer. In return, because of that, and we used money that was allocated in the budget, we received money from FEMA for the amount of $38,000 to recapture those funds that we did because we made a decision to move forward to protect our citizens. Also, we received $378,000 for demolition and deconstruction for community development block grants, a stabilization program. And we had different organizations, and I'm a, we had uh, Sir Metro, which is Glenda, could you please stand? We had Wayne, uh, Wayne Metro, they was involved also with helping us as far as getting these uh, projects torn down and deconstructed. That was a total of $78,000. We received another $139,000 in 214 for a CDBG funds, and that was for rehab of blighted homes, ordinance officers, and fire truck payment. We still have about three more payments on the fire truck. It's roughly about $50,000 a year. But through grants, we were able to pay that. This year, we are seeking $209,000 from the county for, to redo sidewalks. I know that's a big issue in the city. And we're asking that we get some money to help with, uh, replace some of these sidewalks. Because a lot of lawsuits that we have been getting were pertaining to uh, sidewalks. So we're moving forward to try to do some things to do that. Also, in this 15-month period of time, we received $270,000 from the county land bank for demolition of blighted homes. And we, are we have been tearing down homes repeatedly. And we just received another award, an amount of $2.1 one, uh, $2.1 million for blighted structures through the state of Michigan. And with that money there alone, through Wayne Metro, which is a nonprofit, we're going to uh, probably tear anywhere from 80 to 100 houses down in the city, of course, that's blighted, that can't be rehabbed, that can't be saved. 
So we're moving forward with trying to change the image of eCourse. My old saying is you gotta clean up the community before you can move forward. So we're cleaning up the community to move forward. So a grand total of money we received in the last 15 months is close to $4 million. That's a big plus for the city of eCourse. Next, I'll talk to you about economic development. And our economic development, yes, the housing projects are coming down sometime this year. That's a big plus. They're going to be restored with brand new units over there. And that should be up and running probably in the next 18 months or two years after they tear them down. And I like to thank the commissioners. Could you please stand? And Tom Carter, director, Mr. Lackey, who's a commissioner over there at the housing. Mr. Tom Carter. Mark Carter, I'm sorry. When I first got in office, we had a situation where I was looking at our DTE bills. Our DTE bills were extremely high. I mean, I couldn't believe when I first saw the DTE bill for a month. We spent almost $40,000 a month for DTE bills. So I said, whoa, that's a lot of money. So I, me thinking, we got to figure out some kind of way we got to save money. So I went to the DTE representatives, Madeline Williams and Deborah Kane, and I was adamant and talked to them, and they worked diligently with me in the city on ways that we can try to cut that cost. So then we applied for the Distressed City Grant through the state of Michigan. We was awarded $350,000 from the state of Michigan for the Distress Grant Fund. So I called Deborah on the phone. I said, Deborah, I said, we got the will because the project costs like $480,000. So I said, Deborah, we don't have the money to complete the project. You got to get us some money. I know DTE got some money up there. We've been paying DTE bills forever. She started laughing. She said, Mayor Tickwell, she said, I'm going to do whatever I can for you to try to get this project done. So she comes, she calls me up, she said, Mary T, well, we're going to set up a meeting. So she comes to the meeting, she said, this is going to be short and sweet. I said, short and sweet? You know, people say that, you think they, ain't nothing they can do for you. So I'm like, she said, you're going to like this. I said, okay. So I, my eyebrow went up, I said, okay, this is sounds good. So she said, Mayor, she said, this is what we're going to do for the CDB course. What we're going to do is, not only are we going to uh, help you with this project, we're going to give you another $121,000. You're going to save $92,000 a year. At the end of the day, this project is only going to cost the taxpayers of the city of E course $9,000. And that's a drop in the bucket. $9,000 for the citizens of E course that we got to pay. And we're going to save about $92,000 a year on our DTE bill, and that's for the lights in the community. So what we're going to do is, and you can look over here when you get ready, uh, the project that's going to happen, we're going to uh, put all LED lights in the whole entire city. That's what we're going to do, and that's a big plus in the city. Also, Pastor Miles up here on Saliat, they're getting ready to open up their strip mall. They're working on it now to open up a strip mall. That's going to create jobs and bring businesses to the city of Ecorse. I had the pleasure of talking to Pastor Miles, too, about the Echo Center. That's also on Saliat. And that's a resource center for us in the city. And they're giving out, helping people with jobs, helping people with apprenticeships. So I ask you to tell your, your people in your community, go up there to the Echo Center and see what you can do and see they can lead you in the right direction. That's there that's going to help. Because if we create jobs for people in our community, that helps because we want people to start buying houses. We got another additional $100,000 out there for the home program that we're trying to use. That money is being used to help rehab some more houses so we can uh, hopefully get some homeowners into the city. That's what our next goal is. Also, we have had several conversations with the Mill Street property. People have been coming to us to often tell us about they're interested in the property. And we advise them the property is for sale, but it's got to be a right fit for the citizens of Ecos and got to be a right fit for the city. 
and we're not going to just give away the property because we got too much money tied up into that property and it's been sitting there idle since the mill been torn down probably 10, 12 years. So we're moving forward to try to get somebody into that, to buy that uh, property so we can move forward. So far, like since I've been in office, we've, we have torn down about 60 houses. And now, with the uh, new money that we receive, we'll tear down another probably 80 to 100 houses. We understand tearing down houses is not the issue because it lowers your tax revenue and your tax base. So that's why we are working with uh, Southwest Housing, Wayne Metro, Sir Metro to try to rehab and to try to build some new houses. Southwest Housing spoke to us about a month and a half ago and they stated to us that they were willing to try to come into the city and maybe build 20 to 30 houses. But as you know, when you start building houses in an area that we live in, you have to have some help from the state and the county. And that's the only holdup is trying to get that money from the state and county. So we understand that tearing down is not the solution, but we gotta tear down and we gotta clean up. But we are looking at trying to bring in housing because housing helps increase your tax base. And that's what we need, we need revenue, to increase our tax base so we can keep our services. We have also uh, implemented some new ordinances regarding housing. We got a new ordinance that uh, if you have, a, and this is to the citizens, because I want you to start calling and when you see somebody move out of the house, call, call the building department and say, at such and such address, they moved out the house because our new ordinance also states that if a house, if somebody, if the house goes abandoned or vacant, they have to register the house. They have to register the house with the city because, and that way we can keep a track of who owns the house. So when we had to get the grass cut, when we had to build a person for, we cut the grass. So if you see that, make sure you let us know about that. Call the building department and say, hey, there's an address here. There's somebody don't live there. So we can stay on top of it because that's what got us in trouble the first time. Why well, we got so many blighted houses. There was no control, nobody watched it, nobody paid attention to it. But now that's what we're doing. We're making sure that you register these houses, this cost of fee, that for those people to register those vacant or abandoned houses, and that's revenue to the city. We're getting ready to get real strict on people with these CFOs. I mean, that's what we gotta do, CFOs, is for when people go in and they wanna rent these properties, we're getting strict on it because we got to increase our tax value of our homes. We have to. It's a must. So we get getting strict on it because we wasn't in the past. We wasn't strict on it. And that's what happened to start the problem with the blight. So we get ready to get strict on it. I mean, if you see somebody on the weekend working on a house and they ain't pulling no permit, call the building department and we're going to send somebody over there because we lose revenue when people do that by not pulling permits. I want to talk about the area of public safety. And the public safety, we have uh, started a fire investigative unit through the Down River Task Force, which consists of two uh, public safety officers and one fighter fighter. What this does is it allows us to investigate these fires that we get. So far, with this task force, it has, uh, we have arrested uh, one person so far regarding a fire that was set. So this is a plus to us as far as helping with these fires that we get with these houses. We let people know that we're not gonna tolerate that. If you do things in e-course crime, we're gonna try to get you. Also, we have a traffic detail. The traffic detail has netted over $200,000 in revenue in the city of e-course for people speed and coming through e-course. Uh, and we have, uh, we just stopped that and we got that uh, some money from Homeland Security in order to offset some of that overtime that we had to pay. But I take $200,000 all day long if you ain't paying a little bit of money for overtime. And that's what we're doing is trying to, we're trying to increase, increase revenue. We have an officer in the uh, Drano, the narcotics unit. And the unit has, so far, street value, they have nearly bought in a million dollars in drugs, which is a plus in the city of e -Course. Now, one of the big things we got going now is a joint venture between three cities, Ecos, River Rouge, and uh, Hav Tramon. And this project is uh, dealing with uh, insurance fraud and license tags. 
The state and the insurance company are getting real strict. If you go out here and get a fake insurance policy, or you have a fake tag on your prop on your car, your car can be confiscated, forfeited, and we can you have to pay to get it back. And so far, this unit has a, a, a fraud case in the amount of 4,300 fraud insurance cases that they have bust. The only issue is that we have to go and collect the cars. And so far, cash on hand, they have, we have $30,000 coming to the city because of this unit. With these 4,300 fraudulent cases, we can generate over a million dollars to the city of E-Course. And have traffic and Highland Park each would generate a million dollars each for this fraud case. So if you know anybody that's out there that's got fake insurance, you better tell me. You better get that insurance right, because we coming at them. And through this, and through this uh, project also, too, we have been able to uh, get a Chevy Trailblazer worth about $6,800. We got a Dodge Journey, which is worth about $11,000. And we have an Explorer worth about $5,000, and we also have about $25,000 in uh, other vehicles that we have. So we're moving forward in the police department. So I'd like to give Public Safety Director uh, Mike Moore a hand for doing a good job in the Newport Police Department. All of our full-time firefighters have received fire officer training. And this helps us cut down on overtime because we can let them uh, be in charge of the station. Those are some of the things that Mr. Uh, Director Moore has implemented that has helped with the department has cut the overtime down $50,000. And also we have police officers. Our police officers are cross-trained now. They are cross-trained to be firemen. So what that does is that allows us to come to that call and response time quicker because the police officers are already out there and then be time the fire department put on their gear and get out there. The police officers are already there, starting on the fire, doing whatever they have to do. And that is a plus for us. We didn't get a lot of snow this year, but last year we was getting a lot of snow. So this past year, we just implemented the new uh, snow emergency plan, which means that we will put in, in force next year, or oh, if we get some heavy snow this year, we, we call it state of emergency. And then what you have to do is one day, you have to move one side of the street, you can park on, you have to move your car so we can come through with the blades. And then the next year, you have to, the next week you have to move, the next day you have to move your car over so you can, we can shovel the snow on the other side of the street. These are some of the things that we're trying to do to help the citizens so we can follow the streets properly, so they can get in out of their cars. Those are some of the things that we're doing to try to help. Now you know there's always issues with budgets. Ms. Miller knows she's got a business. There's always issues with budgets. In 2015 and 2016, uh, a budget should be approved by April. And you know, we have to go to the state whenever we do anything. So we're just a figurehead. We have to go to the state. It doesn't matter. We have to go to the state. What we have done is to cut money out of the budget. We have eliminated the human resource department and contracted that service out. We was paying someone about $61,000 to do human resources. Now we pay a company $18,000 to do the human resource. So we have uh, cut out about $34,000, $33,000. We're looking at other areas. We're looking at controller. We're trying to do, we was paying about $150,000 for a controller. We're trying to save money on that. We're trying to get that down to about $85,000. That's what we're doing. So we're probably going to end up having to get a full-time controller in order to cut down on that cost. We're also looking at other ways of saving money. Uh, retiring employees and active employees with the health insurance. We're not looking at them to let them lose any benefits. We're looking at them to keep the same benefits, but we're trying to figure out ways we've been working with HAP and Blue Cross to try to cut down on our costs as far as that goes, because we have to cut down on this cost. We're also looking at getting out of the library system with Wayne County because it's costing us too much money to be in the system with that because I think it's just us and maybe one other city that's in the uh, Wayne County library system and we got to get out of it because we're spending all the money paying for it. So we looked at what other communities have done and they got out of the Wayne County system and they have saved a tremendous amount of money by getting out of the system. 
and we, we're looking into that. And I know you're probably asking, yeah, we had a balanced budget, but why are you trying to still make cuts? Because I'm going to explain to you why we should try to make cuts. In 2018, we have to pay back $200,000 to the state for money that we borrowed. When Joyce Park, the emergency financial manager, was here to pay off the debt, we borrowed some money. So that's the first start part of the payment. In 2019, we got to pay back $300,000. So then in 2020, moving forward, we wanted to pay back $500,000 a year to, to that that's paid off. So what that does is add money and expenditures to your budget that we don't have because our tax revenue is low. We losing about $300,000 this year alone in revenue from the state and with the county because our, our, rev, our tax dollars are going down, our property value is going down. And I know some people are like, yeah, their tax value is going down. But when your tax value goes down in the community, you have to offset it some kind of way because you have to, so you have to start cutting. And that's what we're doing. We're cutting. For expense of uh, recreation, we have a new uh, recreation director, Joe Pasolacqua. And uh, interim uh, thing, and we do have some programs for our kids in recreation. On Mondays and Wednesday at uh, 3 o'clock, at Bunch School, they have uh, basketball for the kids. This year, they are going to do a, they don't have a travel league. They're going to play in Lincoln Park. And in this travel league, uh, it's 12 and under. We're going to bring back our Little League program. We didn't have a Little League program. That was something that Mr. Childers had started. We got our information from uh, the Little League program to try to bring it back. So that's Joe Pasolato is continuing to work with that as far as going with bringing back Little League. And uh, this was just uh, brought to my attention too, that we've been for years talking about the school. When I was on the school board, me and the athletic director, we had been talking about for years having Little League football. Every community down river got a Little League football program but the Eagles. So what has happened, the athletic director told me that we're gonna have a Little League program. So that allows our kids in the community to play in a little league program. He said on Tuesdays and Thursdays, uh, I think at four o'clock over at Kennedy School, they got about 60 kids over there getting in shape for football. And they got a, girls too for cheerleaders. So we're moving in the right direction to try to keep our kids active and keep them out of trouble. We're doing some things. One of the things I like to think, I gotta take my hat off to this guy here. This guy, like they said, he's probably the hardest working guy in showbiz. That's uh, Kevin Lawrence. Kevin, stand up. <laughs> this guy here is our DPW uh, superintendent. I mean, for what we have, we got about five people. We don't have no equipment. That's what some of the things what the EMF did. They stripped us from our equipment. This guy works hard all the time. His phone never stopped ringing. I know sometimes I'll call him in the morning, he probably say, boy, he go to Mel calling me again. But he always responds, he always answers. I mean, he does, he gets things done with the limited amount of resources that we have. Because we don't have a lot of resources. Uh, what can you bring in a DPW? That's what the EMF wanted, to bring in a DPW, but not support it with any type of equipment. I mean, she bought two trucks, but what two trucks gonna do you? We need a loader, we need a dump truck. We need all those things, but we don't have them. But we're looking forward to start a capital improvement program so we can buy some equipment, so we can hide these things, so we can keep it in the house. And that's what we need to do. And like I say, let's get Kevin another hand, because this guy works tremendously hard. Now, what do we do to move e-course forward? We gotta stop doing the old e-course way. We gotta increase revenue. We gotta cut spending. We gotta create a DDA, a Downtown Development Authority. I spoke to U.S. Steel, I spoke to Praxair, speaking to business people, so let's start a DDA. Because when you start a DDA, that helps in that business community. That makes it more attractive. I was talking to the uh, Mayor Wyandotte, and me and him talked about it. And he said, I was supposed to meet with him to, to, to see how they put together their DBA. 
so we can do that to move in the right direction. I mean, that is a big plus. A lot of people don't even think so, but that is a big plus when you have a DDA because it makes, like I said, it makes that community more attractive. It makes it more attractive for that businessman. Any people with businesses need to get involved in that DDA. Also, we got to reestablish our Brownfield Authority because with the Brownfield Authority, that allows too to get you get a lot of federal funded money to help clean up sites. That's like with the Mill Street property. That's actually under the Brownfield Authority. And we have to reestablish that. We have to get the people that was on the board back active. And we're going to get those people back active so we can do that with the Brownfield Authority. We need to keep writing grants. And if you know anybody, somebody, my door is always open. You can help us write a grant, help us write a grant. I, my ears is open because we need all the money we can get. And we got to still, we got to enforce our ordinances. Uh, we got Dwayne Penniman. Stand up, Mr. Penniman. I mean, he's only one guy, but he gets a lot of flack. I know he probably the same way with me. He get tired of me texting him and calling me too. But this guy works extremely hard. And also, the most important thing is we got to get the citizens involved. You got to come to the council meeting. You got to voice your opinion. You got to complain. I don't care if you call me and complain. Some people call me and complain and say, well, man, I don't want to complain. I say, that's my job. That's what you elected me for, to complain. You gotta complain about what's going on. Because if we don't know what we can't, we don't know everything. And we need your ears and your eyes to help us. That's the only way we're gonna turn this community around. We gotta come together as one big happy family. The citizens, we gotta put all our differences aside, our personalities aside. We gotta come together. We gotta start saying, hey, we're gonna stand up for what's ours. Because it's all we got. So the key thing is the community gotta get involved. Don't say if you see something happening across the street, you don't care because it don't affect you. It does affect you. So tell, call the police, make a complaint. You can call up there. We got complaint forms right there on the desk. So afterwards, you got a complaint form, or you can call me. I, I, I answer your call. I come to your house and knock on your door if you, if you call me. And if you got a complaint, because I want to know what's going on in the community. So we need the citizens to get involved. Also, and that's the end of what I got to say, but I want to also thank a few people who support us real heavily, who some of our contracted services. I want to, uh, John Hennessy from Hennessy, our engineering firm. Stand up, John. Uh, Cassandra and Ashley uh, from our uh, legal team. John, Madeline uh, from DTE, John from Wayne Metro, stand up. Madeline Williams and Deborah Kane, stand up from DTE. Also, I have uh, Mr. Uh, Chris Mathis from Gary Peters' office, the senator, federal senator. Uh, this organization did a lot of things. They did the thing in front of the uh, senior citizen in front of the uh, city hall. They didn't ask for nothing. They just want to do something in the city. And a lot of people should get involved with this. I renewed e-course, would they stand up over there? Ms. Holmes and her husband. <laughs> oh, the planning, zoning, stand up. Hey. And I'd just like to thank you all for coming out, you know, enjoy the food, stay around so you can listen to what she has to say, because this is important to the city. This master plan is very important. And also I'd like to thank the, all the clergymen who came out. Could y'all please stand, Reverend Davis, Reverend Porter, Reverend O'Keefe, <laughs> Brother Harris, Brother Phillips, Pastor Sherrod. And also we gotta give a, Big hand to the oldest senior in the city of Ecorse, Miss Ethel Stevens. Let's give her a hand. Miss <laughs> Stevens says she always come out. Now, if she's 100 years old and can come out, 
then we can come out. She's almost at every council meeting. She gets mad when she can't come to a council meeting. And I tell you about Miss Stevenson, she'll call you any time of the day. It don't matter. She called me at 11.30 at night. I look at my phone, should she be asleep? <laughs> Not Miss Stevenson. And she, and look, and she gonna talk to you too until she get her point across. So hey, i like to thank all of y'all. Pastor Miles, thank you for what you're doing. Hey, hey, thank you for coming out. Enjoy your food. Good night. <laughs>